Okay, you all good? Let's do it. Hello and welcome to the B2C Lead Generation Podcast. You're listening to the B2C Lead Generation Podcast. My name is Daniel Hopewell here with Simon Blaney and this is episode 61, How Do I Find Good Quality Lead Suppliers? And before we kind of jump in with this, we should note that I usually say I'm here with Simon Delaney. I'm literally, you know, I'm literally here in the same room with set up a new office. Normally I say that and actually we're in different places entirely. It's just a figurative way. But we're um, all actually looking into each other's eyes at the moment. It's unnerving me. I feel <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, if I, you know I'm looking into your eyes and I look up like that. Yeah. <laughs> George Weird actually. It's like you're peering over the top of your screen, your laptop. It's, it's, yeah, it's, yeah, I'm, so I can see you here and I can see you there. It's, Makes a makes a difference. So yeah, give us feedback on this little bit of small talk at the end of the podcast. <laughs> Set the scene. Um, but yeah, we're going to try and do this. We've got a new office, and we're going to try and do a podcast here. Um, we'll see what that sounds like. So this question is a pretty basic question, but it gets asked a lot. People are always asking us it. Um, it's something that all lead buyers pretty much want to know. How do they find good supplies? So we're going to try and answer this question. Um, Simon, how do people listen to this? want to find identify and work with good lead suppliers how do they do it so it's quite an interesting question purely because um in 2011 and actually beyond that but in 2011 i um started a lead gen agency called media Bowl, and we used to buy leads and sell them to um buyers of leads so it's our job to find high quality lead suppliers so when people ask me, um, I sort of think what I used to do. Uh, and it was a lot of networking. That'd just be, you know, I don't know, going to shows where I thought people could supply leads could be. Um, or I already knew they supplied leads and I'd go to shows to meet them or I'd have meetings with them that, you know, I mean, obviously COVID changed things. It could be that you'd do that over um zoom whatever else now but you know there's an element of networking in there and that's just basically like meeting people um the other thing i used to do is if i thought someone else was buying leads and connected to uh lead generators or lead suppliers that i didn't know i used to sit and go through their contacts on linkedin um and look at anyone who i thought was a lead generator or a lead supplier and think i wonder who that is as well, it's quite a nice conversation to have because normally on LinkedIn, you just get flooded with like people selling you stuff. Actually, you're buying something, so <laughs> the conversation is a lot easier, right? Yeah. Um, but ultimately, when I actually think what I see is it was basically treating the lead buying process as like your job. Yeah, you, know, you need to find out where the best leads come from. Who are the good lead generators? Uh, where are they? Who are they? What are their sites? Um, I used to trawl through like native ads, looking at who lead generators were. I used to trawl through anything social I could find, groups, whatever, finding lead generators or lead suppliers, um, going through keywords. You know, it's pretty simple if you're buying I don't know, life insurance leads type in life insurance look at the ads look at the companies that have lead forms um so this is a funny thing it's the, the sort of answer is there in black and white it just involves a bit of work so i think the real question is are you willing to put the work in to find high quality lead generators or lead suppliers or would you just rather work with someone who will do that for you um, to give you a bit of background in working with someone that can do that for you, depending on the size of your organization, the amount of leads that you're going to buy and what the value is um, behind them. In the first year of setting up a lead buying and selling agency in 2011, so this is now 11 years ago. So, you know, with inflation and everything else, our turnover with four people was uh, two million pounds. That's just to give you an indication that if you know where to buy leads from, obviously, you know, if, if you're a lead generator, 
um, agents, you sort of need to know where to sell them to as well. well that's a different question. Um, you could potentially make huge savings by bringing that lead generation buying process internally. So, you know, when the, you might think, well, is this a full-time job? Could someone do it? If you could save 100 grand a year, if you could save a quarter of a million pounds a year, um, yeah, because that's really what we're talking about is whether you're willing to pay that money for someone else to do it. There's nothing wrong with that. I, I you know, matters not what I think, whether you do it, I used to do it. So, you know, if you'd have asked me 10 years ago, I'd have gone, yeah, do this. Um, or whether you're going to bring it in internally and there's a benefit internally, just that that person potentially knows your business. Um, I think it's worth pointing out at this point, um, just in case people are new to this, you know, maybe get shared and never listen to the podcast, let's just say. Um, but just to establish that you're impartial at this point, you're no longer doing doing this. Because um, you know you're saying about going through LinkedIn and finding people and stuff like that. Like that's a that's a tip for people to use. That's not something you're doing, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Well, I think it's but ultimately that is the question, is that you know that it's just the payoff between effort and uh the reward. So I there's no right or wrong. Um and again it depends on the volume, whether it's something you want to do. You can have perfectly good and um, quality relationships with agencies or brokers that handle all that stuff for you. So, you know, why would you need to do it yourself? Um, but ultimately, if you want to find good quality sources of leads from lead generators or wherever it comes from, it just requires a bit of effort going through keywords, looking at where the leads are generated and contacting those companies and building relationships with them. But if you are a buyer, it's going to be a rare, you know, really easy relationship to build so just to kind of push this slightly further finding lead suppliers is one thing but like the question is how do you find good lead suppliers you know what i mean like um at what point do you qualify at what point do you say yeah they are good or you know how do you establish that like is it like a year's time is it a month's time do you know what i mean and when do you decide whether they're good or not? well anyone could be sort of good or bad at any point it's a bit like schrodinger's cat or um you know, the wave particle experiment but uh, <laughs> uh the ultimate thing um you do is you run due diligence working with people so this would be a document that you send someone that asks a series of questions you find out how they generate leads look in dig into the transparency behind it you know what the traffic sources they use um are they being compliant is everything you know collected uh with consent does the site look legitimate? Is, does everything sort of add up? Um, then put aside test budgets, whatever figure that is that you're willing to potentially lose. Um, so let's say it was 500 pounds or a thousand pounds, run a test with them and um, put a cap on the test and watch it like a hawk. And uh, you know, the, the good thing about a test as well is that they actually sort of need to know your process. So if I was a buyer, I'd be like, you know, here's the script that um, the agents use. This is the sort of wording we use when a lead comes into us. So the less friction you can add between the lead generation point and the sales operation, the more conversions effectively you're going to get. Um, and then after running a test, if you're hitting ROI, or if you think you could hit ROI, but you're not, and there's like mitigating circumstances, you know, something went wrong or whatever. Um, it's just about like growing that test effectively. So, you know, you go from 500 pounds spend or a thousand pounds spend to 3000 pounds spend, 5,000 pounds spend. And there'll be a natural ceiling that you hit where the quality either starts to diminish or they can't deliver the volume that you're expecting anyway. Um, and all that happens is that they get added to your stable of trusted lead generators and so the uh so it rolls on just just uh to not end but just to sort of uh clarify one thing you gave a, a talk at lead gen world last week which is back from that now and there was a bit of it, a bit of this was kind of mentioned that you were talking about going granular with your source and sort of spreading your bets it got me thinking like obviously that's not an idea world you would do that you'd spread it as much as you can but obviously People might be struggling to find one or two good suppliers. How big is the market? That's what I'm trying to work out. Like, how many should I be getting? How how big can I be getting? How, how what's available? That's what I'm sort of 
and trying to work out. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's finite, right? Like, it's not just like an ever ending revolving door of people that generate leads. And there's probably more agencies, brokers than there are actual end lead generators. That's sort of changing to some degree. You get new lead generators um, popping up. But um, what I used to say to people is it's nowhere near as big as you're imagining. Because <laughs> we used to work with um, you know, clients that would be like, I don't know, why have we only got 30 people feeding leads in? And I'd be like, that's 75% of all the lead generation companies in, that can generate leads in that vertical. Like there aren't, you know, there aren't very many of them. Um, so, yeah, I mean, there's a few, you know, if you went into like life insurance, there's probably less than a hundred high quality lead generators generating leads in that vertical, maybe slightly more, but it's going to be around that number. Um, and some, you know, the volume would be really small. Um, others, you know, sort of professional organizations that can drive hundreds, potentially even thousands of leads per day. But it's a bit like traffic to any sort of site is the way to think about it. And this is why, you know, we all know programmatic's bullshit because um, in the UK, if we say, for example, that you can apply this across pretty much any country, there's only a certain number of sites that like everyone goes to. Do you know that like occupy 95% of the traffic in the UK? You know, stuff like BBC, Guardian, um, there can be different sites. So there's, I don't know how many, there's probably like 25, 30, 40 sites that have 99% of all the traffic in the UK. And the other 1% is more niche stuff. And, you know, that's when you can do it. But if you went, it's like a programmatic thing that make you believe that, um, you know, there's just traffic awash everywhere. Lead generation is a bit like that, that most of the volume comes from a top tier of uh, companies that are really professional organizations, um, you know, that are worth sort of multi millions, potentially even more, um, and are eating up the lion's share of uh, spend on stuff like PPC, native, social, whatever else. Um, but I think this sort of, it, it might be a different podcast, but this is also, you know, how can you compete against that um, as a smaller lead generator? And why would you work with smaller lead generators if they're not producing that volume? It's because they find niches within it and then that volume expands on its own. Um, that could be something for a different podcast. Something like you mentioned, I spoke about, I think of finding niches. Um, but yeah, so the, I can't say like give you a definitive answer of how many lead generators there are um, and you know what the total volume of leads, but like any sort of market where there's traffic involved and people's data, it's, it's like a, um, the opposite of an iceberg. Most of it is the, the huge companies that you can see, if that makes sense. It just makes sense, yeah. Um, I think, I guess, just to sort of, end on a final thought it makes me feel that if i'm a lead generator listening to this there's opportunity there because like you say like there's the demand for this but the supply's not that big um which sounds like a great position to be in in a sense but then the flip side of that is to answer the question as the buyer it just reaffirms the idea you've got to work hard you've got to go and dig in and find yourself and put the work to find the people in and i guess it's like everything we say, there's no secret sauce to it. It's just a bit of a bit of graft and effort, but it's okay. worth doing. Exactly. And that's uh, that's what the real secret sauce is, that you're just going to spend time figuring out where the data comes from. Well, it's relationships. That's like you say, it's building that good relationship with them. Um, that is, it always needs to come back to that, whether it's between the brand and uh, the lead seller or between the brand and the consumers. It's like... It seems like even like a, a legion world last week, it just always seems to come back to that. It's through these relationships is like as key as ever. Um, okay, how do I find quality lead suppliers? I think we sort of, although we didn't give a definitive answer there, we definitely gave lots of ideas for things people can actually start implementing and begin looking at trying themselves, which I think 
as, as much as we can do. Um, hopefully that's useful for people and any questions by all means, yeah, pop a message to myself or Simon and we'll try and go into more depth uh, on that or something. Um, cool, episode 61 of the B2C Lead Gen podcast. Thanks for listening to the B2C Lead Generation podcast. Be sure to hit subscribe to hear more from those at the very cutting edge of the lead gen world.